So my name is Tyler Speck. Uh, I'm a senior health and exercise science major with a concentration in health promotion. Um, CSU has been a great experience for me as far as all of the different resources that have been provided, the experiences that we've gotten through the major. Um, so I came to CSU as both a veteran student and a transfer student. So on the veteran side, there's virtually unlimited resources from the a ALVS office, which offers free coffee to student veterans, um, and also any uh, students who are over the age of 23, but also free printing, which in the HES major is very, very useful when you have you know crazy amounts of slides from exercise physiology, BMS, which all of you will learn plenty about, uh, whether you're sports medicine or health promotion. Um, but yeah, ALVS has been a great resource for me. Uh, additionally, CSU was great transferring in. Um, I came from a community college in Las Vegas, which is where I left active duty in the Air Force and started community college in Las Vegas. Um, I believe something like 90% of my credits were accepted when I came to CSU, so I had no time loss and just picked up right where, right where I left off at community college. Um, as far as the health promotion concentration goes, I think it's a great option for anyone who's looking to just go in, finish their bachelor's and go directly into the workforce because the health promotion concentration gives experience that you don't get in sports medicine, whether that's the hands-on uh, portion of adult fitness or the health programming that we take in our senior capstone class both of which are not in the sports medicine concentration. So health promotion really gives you a good option uh, as far as finishing your bachelor's and going directly into the workforce. Um, HES as a whole gives tons of, tons of good options for classes uh, as far as our exercise physiology, like I mentioned, you get to work out in this lab here, conducting experiments on our parvo carts the Wingate bikes, there's plenty of weights. Uh, so there's so much cool stuff you get to do. You actually get to create your own experiment, which you present to your professor at the end of the semester. Um, that's a dual class as well, so that's offered to both sports medicine and health promotion. Um, exercise prescription is another great class that gives you experiment, experience um, developing exercise programs for different types of populations, whether that's elderly, um, anyone rehabbing from an injury, uh, cardiac rehab. So you get a lot of different views on how to develop exercise programs for different populations as well. Um, so on the health promotion side, uh, we go through, we start off with our first practicum, which is adult fitness. Um, honestly, for me, my career goal is working in athletics and being a strength and conditioning coach for a college or professional athletics. So working with an elderly population to me didn't really sound interesting going into it, but I really got a lot out of the experience and ended up really liking it. Um, I had a great member that I worked with and wrote uh, exercise plans for. Um, but the relatable experience that I took away from that is queuing of exercises. Uh, it's very easy as a young active adult to think that what I can do is something that anyone can do. So when you're trying to, even something as simple as a push-up, uh, when you're trying to teach that to an elderly member, you know, they're, they may have never been shown proper form and they may not know how to actually do a push-up. So it really forces you to have to step back and learn how to properly cue different parts of an exercise. Um, additionally, uh, in working with someone with injuries, you have to learn how to develop an exercise program for something to work muscles that they may not feel comfortable working. So for example, if you're trying to do, uh, figure out tricep exercises, but they have a shoulder injury, you have to figure out how to tailor their workout program to avoid aggravating that shoulder injury, but also still working out the triceps. Um, so I, I loved the experience of adult fitness. It was great to really meet all of the members there and uh, get to kind of 
get some experience in that like gym setting. So from adult fitness, we then go into our second practicum. And the awesome part about that is that we get to essentially choose where we want to go. So a lot of health promotion majors choose to go into cardiac rehab settings, whether that's at Banner Health or UC Health. Um, I personally did my uh, second practicum with the head sports dietitian here at CSU. So I got to go to football practice every day, um, was involved with a lot of their pre-practice, uh, kind of pre-workout stuff, um, and then stayed until the end of practice and helped organize team meals as well. So that was great for me to get to see the sports environment, see what goes into pre-practice, during and after practice. Um, given that HES doesn't have a lot of nutrition in it, it was good to kind of get to sit down with her and ask questions, you know, how, how do you plan diets for recovery or weight gain or weight loss? And, and since she works with all CSU athletics, it's you have the wide range of, of athletes. You have uh, football linemen, and then you have women's basketball, or swimming and diving, or soccer, or, you know, so you get to see the whole, the whole gamut of everything. Um, so now where I'm at in my HES career is moving into my internship, which I'll be performing at Exos in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, I am starting right away. As soon as the new year hits, um, I will be working with NFL Combine athletes doing strength and conditioning coaching. So I'm extremely excited for the opportunity and I don't really feel like this would have been possible if I hadn't chosen uh, HES at CSU because the internship is part of the degree program and it's something that I get to do while I'm still at school. So it, it's a phenomenal opportunity to get to work with NFL uh, prospects, get to see how their training goes. Um, yeah, like what? <laughs> Obviously, as health and exercise science majors, we we're very science heavy. Um, the first science class that most of you will encounter will be uh, biology, which is really just the start of a whole whole gamut of uh, heavy science classes, which will then move into chemistry. Both of those, I think, because um, they're not necessarily HES specific, so you get a lot of different students. Um, I think the most beneficial thing is to rely on your lab mates from those classes because um, you can kind of pick and choose study habits that you like from each person. I wasn't a big note card person until biology and then suddenly now I, I go through like a pack of note cards every semester. Um, then that will all lead everyone into BMS which is kind of this heavy overarching class that is widely known across campus for everyone who has to has to take it uh, same as same as the other previous courses I mean I throughout my scholastic career I've always done pretty good at you know I would say minimal studying but that was a huge awakening for me and I really had to lean on my peers and kind of because everyone understands something differently and although Dr. Wallern is a phenomenal teacher, and I think he does the best that he can at relaying such a difficult topic, um, you know, like I said, everyone understands something differently. So maybe the person you sit next to can explain it in a slightly different way that just suddenly clicks for you. So I think definitely relying on peers and forming study groups early on, especially if you can find people within your same year group within HES because chances are you'll be moving through all of these difficult classes together because BMS is only the start of it and you roll directly into exercise physiology and it's all the same concepts but as they apply to exercise. So same thing, I knew who was good in BMS and stuck with them in, in exercise physiology because like there were ways that I could say something that helped them understand it and vice versa. So. Um, relying on uh, your peers and also the graduate uh, teaching assistants. I mean, a lot of them went through the HES program here as well, 
so they can go off of their undergrad experience. Some of them went to other universities and maybe learned concepts a slightly different way that might be a little bit more relatable for you. So I think just asking questions, never be afraid to, to step up because I know for me, being an older student and a veteran, at first the pride was a little bit of an issue and I didn't want to ask for help but as soon as I started asking the right questions to the right people, it really helped me out. Um, I, I knew plenty of people that had to take BMS multiple times, and while that can be discouraging, your academic experience, whether you're health and exercise science or you elect to choose to be a different major, your time in college is only a short time within the rest of your life. So if health and exercise science is something that you're truly passionate about and want to do, then what's taking BMS another semester? That's only five, six months over the grand scheme of the rest of your career. So if, if BMS or chemistry, even physics, is something that you're not the best at and maybe it takes you two or three tries, I say just keep, keep going because in the, especially in the HES community, we like to promote resiliency a lot and I think if you can prove that you're resilient by continuing on and maybe having to take a class a second time, then, then it, it's all worth it in the end when you get to walk across the stage.